So, uh, hello everybody. My name is Adele Warin and I'm one of the organizing members of the World Toilet Day. Uh, I would like to warmly welcome you to this uh, multi-stakeholder forum on sanitation on the occasion of the World Toilet Day. Sanitation feed into all the nearly into all the other development goals. It improves health, reducing child mortality, uh, school absenteeism, and promote gender equality. Ensuring safe sanitation promotes human equality and dignity. In turn, it will drive the participation of the poor to eliminate poverty. Thus, the achievement of this seemingly simple goal could hold the key to other as well. Do you agree, Anurag? Absolutely, Adil. I uh, agree with you 100%. And sanitation is, in fact, a challenge that holds the key to solving many more uh, problems. And it is such a vicious problem which, uh, which impacts many other uh, problems also as you. Uh, and the role of people from different sectors and different fields of work is very important for, such a, uh, for making any progress in the field of sanitation. And the, this multi-stakeholder forum represents a step in that direction. So we have speakers coming from different uh, uh, fields of work. We have a sanitopreneur who, who is making eco toilets and uh, promoting them in, uh, in different parts of the world. We have policymakers. We have members who are working in, uh, in international corporations, in international NGOs and um, organizations with, uh, working on sanitation and improving access to sanitation across the world. And we also have uh, academics who are working uh, in, in the field of sanitation. So without uh, much delay, I would like to introduce these speakers. Uh, Professor Ramani, can you go to the slide with the speaker? Yes, I'll just go to the slide with the, I'll go to. So we have Mr. Michael from uh, Separate Waterless Toilets uh, from Sweden. Then we have Mr. Valentin Post, who is the CEO of Finnish Mondial in Netherlands. Uh, then we have Mr. Sampath Rajkumar, who is a consultant with Rural Development Organization Trust and Finnish Mondial, and he is based in India. Uh, and then we have Dr. Raja Venkataramani, who is the senior advisor at Candid Need India Trust. Uh, we have two policy makers and uh, officers of administrative services in India, uh, Mr. Roshan Kumar Singh and Mr. Himanshu Singh, who are working in the state of Madhya Pradesh, which is performing very well in uh, the field of sanitation uh, in, uh, in, across the different states in India. Uh, we have a, uh, a, uh, we have a speaker who is not listed here, Mr. Amit Kumar. Uh, he, he is the CEO of Fusion Waste Management Corporation. And then the, finally, we have our discussant as uh, Ms. Jennifer Williams, who is the executive director of Fecal Sludge Management Alliance. And the session will be moderated by Professor Shama Ramani. Uh, so I would like to uh, ask Professor Ramani to begin the session. Thank you, Anurag. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. And then I'm going to ask you people to, uh, to write on the chat. Uh, Anurag, I can see you on my screen. Okay. Uh, is, there, uh, is that normal? Uh, maybe because, just give me a second. Yes. So while he, is, while he is doing that, can you write in the chat what we mean by the silos? Can you tell me what silos we are talking about? The audience, what what is this? Why did we say it's time to break the silo? I'm very curious about your your reaction. Please write on the chat, and I will share and I will give the vision of the conference. Come, come. What silos are we talking about? 
I think I need at least one or two answers if you want this, if you want me to proceed. <laughs> because I'm very, good, I got one. So silos in terms of mentality, negative association uh, with giving a shit. That's, that's very interesting. That's one. Does anybody have any other ideas? Because indeed, Joyce, we are going to be talking about different, different kinds of silos. Uh, good. Another one. Uh, the silos in which sanitation is discussed and only in those silos. Exactly. That is also a very good one. And that is that, in fact, those silos hold different kinds of communities. And as Anurag said, that's why a it was, we felt it was time to break down the silos. Oh, good. Between different people. Yes, traditional ways of implementing. Great, great. Now people are starting to come up. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. Because all this will go in the, uh, in your ideas about what we understand as the silo. Okay, in which sanitation is kind of confined. So now what I uh, am trying to now, yes. Now, the thing is, you've got to understand first, we have to start with what the problem is. The problem with the problem is that there are many facets to the problems. So the problem is like this Greek mythological monster with multiple heads. And if you cut off one head in some of the stories, two heads will appear in their place. And the problem of sanitation is kind of like this because you see first, there are people who don't have toilets. This is a figure in 2015, okay? This is the figure in 2000, I'm just, I shouldn't see the chat. Uh, and it was about 2.4 billion. And now it's about 2 billion, which means that in the last five years, 400 million toilets have been built all around the world and uh, diffused. So this leads to other kinds of problems. You see, many of the toilets break down the picture on the left is from the left hand. Uh, the picture on the left is from the morning session where a designer has gone around photographing broken toilets all around the world. And she said she has been asking policymakers is there any statistics on the number of toilets broken down? And she said in all the countries, Nobody wants to count the number of broken toilets. They only want to count the number of toilets that have been built. And here we are. Uh, I'm sure one person in our audience remembers this, Mr. Subraman, another toilet he took us to, which is kind of broken, which is used now to keep the cows. Okay. And then we have another problem. Many people don't feel like using the toilet that they have. Uh, my sister and I talked to this very stately gentleman on the beach who just said, hey, girls, the toilets are for you. I mean, the beach is so cool for us guys. And this is a situation in many parts of the world where, especially in rural areas, they do not feel like using toilets. Of course, in urban areas, the dynamics are very, very different. And finally, there is an elephant in the room, and which is really the fecal sludge and septage management. Now, the World Bank has brought this out as if this is a problem only for low and middle income countries. As our friend from Sweden, Separate, will testify, we think it's a problem for developed countries also. And Europe is at the lead in this, in thinking that fecal sludge management is not just an issue for developing countries, but for everyone. And this is really the big challenge in urban sanitation. 
And here we want to really explore this notion of the circular economy. The circular economy basically asks for, I mean, the mantra is reduce, reuse, and recycle. Now, we cannot have reduced the amount of fecal uh, matter produced, but we can reduce open defecation. We can reduce unprocessed fecal sludge being thrown into the water bodies and try to recover the raw materials here is the fecal sludge and try to recover the maximum amount of nutrients and recycle the maximum so that the residual waste which goes into water bodies is minimal and what you will see is that there are many technologies so that at least as far as fecal sludge is concerned we can go for zero waste so again you see who is doing the fighting well, everybody is doing the fighting for us. And that's why we have all our speakers here, again, from different areas of the economy and coming together to handle this in an integrated way. So today we are happy to welcome all of you. And we want to break many, many different kinds of silos. So with this word of thanks, I would like to hand the floor to Michael. And I have a question for our um, audience. Um, please try to note what are their weapons? How are they trying to break the silo in a different way? OK, uh, I, does. Do you want to share the screen? OK, go ahead. We are ready, Michael. Yes, hi, hello. Very nice to see everybody. <clears throat> My name is Michael from Separate. Uh, toilet will change the world. Toilet will change the world. Slide two, please. As you know, 2.4 billion people live without proper toilet. The water toilet is not the answer for helping these people in the world. Economy, infrastructure and water saving is not the best skills the water toilet has. To provide toilets for all the people, we need to invest about 262 billion a year in 10 years to solve this problem. Thank you. Because of dirty water diseases, 800 children dies each day. It's because of pollution of water uh, and not existing toilets for everybody. That is around 310,000 children dies each year. And they are below five years old. We need investing 2,620 billion to, to solve this problem for 2.4 billion people to have a proper toilet. How do these people feel? They have a lack of dignity, of course. They, the health is not perfect. Hygiene is it's not perfect. And they can't take care of a family as the children will be sick in this condition. Can we run the film? Yo merezco tranquilidad. Merezco privacidad. Merezco salud. Merezco dignidad. Merezco higiene. Merezco seguridad. Merezco comodidad. El acceso a saneamiento es un derecho humano. Y un derecho humano no puede esperar. Nadie merece esperar.
slide five. Uh, it is important for me and separate to change the toilet world. If we can change the life of 500 people, that would be a great contribution to the people in the world. Please run the film. This is what more than 2 million people in Lima, Peru have to use every single day. A simple hole in the ground that attracts insects, creates an infectious environment, produces terrible smells and threatens the stability of their house. A pit latrine. La mayoría de las mujeres que vivimos por acá obtienen la infección urinaria por esto. Y da vergüenza cuando alguien me viene de visita, me dicen, préstame tu baño. Y tengo que decirle, ay, no, no tengo baño. Hi, Avi. I'm waiting for the next slide. Okay, so mm -hmm. if it's easier for you, uh, Miguel, to handle your slide. I know it's it's great, it's perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. okay so right. the solution, separate villa, is a self-standing toilet that is safe and hygienic, and it gives economy and very little effect on infrastructure, mm -hmm. and can and can give fertilizer if it's needed. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. Okay, how does it work? We have a video on this. Yes, please run it. Over the past 40 years, Separate have developed urine diverting toilets, which are both practical and easy to use. There is no need for expensive sewage systems. All odors are eliminated thanks to the built-in ventilation system and the separation of the liquid and solid waste. The maintenance of the toilet is both easy and hygienic. The process is simple. As long as the user sits down, all the waste will end up in the right place. The solids land in a compostable bag which fills up in roughly four to six weeks for an average household. When the container is full, you just empty the bag into your compost bin. The waste is naturally broken down in the composting process, leaving a safe and nutritious matter. After a year has passed, you can spread this compost onto your garden and watch your flowers grow. Okay, washes. As you know, here in Europe, we use paper. Uh, but there is many people in the world that don't use paper. They are uh, using water. So we can fix that by a sliding screen. We can make our toilet ready to be used for people that are using water. Or we can say for the whole world. Slide. Nine, please. Uh, many of our product is used on many, many different places in the world. Mm -hmm. when, and because of infrastructure, economy, we can't use water toilets everywhere. So this is a Swedish family that are using our toilets. Next slide. This is an American couple. They have saved 39,000 gallons of water by using our separate villa. This is a, a home planted by a Swedish, one of the Swedish most famous company, IKEA, and they have our toilet inside. And this is a British couple. They're exploring Europe and they have a toilet from us. I want to share with you that, that our toilet can be placed everywhere. It doesn't matter. It can be placed everywhere. So, how our villa was born. In 91, 92, my father started to um, develop existing toilet tech. 
Then we had products where we, where was uh, adapted was not adapted for people. Uh, they was uh, pure technology, you can say. Mm -hmm. I realized that, so I find out that we need to do these products from the users. Uh, 96, we started the development of the toilet, Villa, as we call it. Uh, then we learned what scrotum height was and that women pee backwards. Uh, so we had to develop the toilet so it was suited for everyone. In 2003, we launched our toilet and it was a super success. Uh, separate can make it to today for at least 90% lesser cost than we have a water toilets. Our product will cost about 277 billion for serving 1 billion families in the world. This is how we want to do and making the difference in the world. Please run the video. We install a portable dry toilet that you can put when you urine from feces. The feces fall into a separate container and get mixed with sawdust. For $13 a month, we come by and collect the waste. Cycle it. We currently serve more than 200 families. And 93% of them say that our toilet has improved their lives. Un cambio radical que que he tenido en cuestión de que tenía silo y ahora el baño families. No apesta, no huele nada. A mijito sí. El solito ya ya entra, se defeca solito, misiona solo. Porque más antes no tenía que llevarle. Lo que a mí me convenció para tener esos baños eh, fue la limpieza y sobre todo la menos contaminación al tener un baño, al tener un silo. Every week we collect one ton of feces. This way we guarantee people to have access to our x solution. That is why que de verdad el baño es ¿Cómo debe ser? Cambia la vida. Quisiera que tengan todas, ¿no? Ya se lo recomendé a mi hermana, ya se lo recomendé a algunas vecinas más. Sé que si lo prueban, no lo van a querer soltar porque en verdad es una oportunidad y aparte que es algo muy beneficioso para todos nosotros. Together with your support, we'll launch our toilet campaign in these communities. You can help hundreds of families improve their lives. Y ahora, por favor, voy a bautizarlo. So, call to action. Let's make it together. Help us and people to find driven people that can build up organization X, X run in Peru that have been doing a great job. We, we want to have partnership collaboration worldwide. That we can also help women to start small business. Please help us to spread the word separate and our vision so we can reach change makers. Let's make the toilet change together. As I said before, toilet will change the world. So, any questions? First of all, thank you. Thank that you very much. Thank you. I I, I am going to just ask two clarificative questions. Then uh, I'm going to leave the floor to one Mr. Subaraman, who is in the audience, who is one of India's EcoSan pioneers. 
but first, I want to ask you two clarificatory questions. Uh, Michael, you know, uh, in this shanty town, uh, I, I suppose they're using toilet paper, but still, where does the urine go, number one? And is the municipality handling the, the composting business or is it a woman's cooperative? Because, you know, it's kind of difficult because this is not processed sludge. This is fresh fecal matter that seems to be taken out. Is it taken out every day, every week? I don't know. Isn't it kind of uh, dangerous to do it? Please. And then I... So I'll the, the, first, the, the first, the urine goes directly down into the ground. Yes, straight down to ground, yes. Uh, the second is that uh, it's x runner is an organization and it's built by two uh, women that have been uh, do starting this small business and uh, make it growing. We have supported them with uh, X, of X uh, numbers of uh, uh, toilets so they could start a business. We, we gave them toilets so they can start a business. And uh, from there, they take care of everything. They do a service, pick up the waste, etc., compost it and take care of the compost and sell the compost if it's possible. So, but isn't it a heavy job for women to take the buckets and put it all out and all that? It's always come a, a man that take out the bucket, but the bucket in a toilet that separate villa have it's mm. just eight to nine kilos when it's full. Okay. Okay. So oh. then it's it, it can be lifted. Okay. Yes. Now then uh, I I don't know if Mr. Subaraman can speak. Can you speak, Mr. Subaraman? Would you like to ask a question? Because when you're there in the room, I wanted to give you the floor. I know he's there. I guess he's not able to speak. Does anybody else have any questions? Please go ahead. Um, can I speak? Yes, please. Of course. Okay. Nuki, please go ahead. He's speaking from Nigeria. The internet is not very good. Maybe Adele, we can, yeah, but keep this slide. I like it. Okay. Why Nuki, write in the chat. I can read it I out. Have, I have the chat open so you can write. You can write. You can write. Yeah. Does anybody else have a? So you see, Michael's. Uh, I want to know. Huh. I want to know. Is there any way we can have a sample of the toilet? Or how, how much does it cost us for, for copying? I know. It's not any problem. Send me your address. We will send down one uh, one um, toilet. No problem. The, the interesting thing is this toilet question is that many want to do it by themselves. X runner had a copy, not a copy of our toilet, but had a, a toilet they had. But they came to us and asked us, can you produce a toilet? Yes, we can, because we, have, we are efficient. So therefore, we um, developed the product for them from an existing product and make it very cheap for them. Therefrom, we started the business together. So they are serving about 4,000 families or something, yes. And uh, they are uh, 4,000 people around. They are exploring that now to up to 10,000 people. So it's just starting, but I know we can do something together. That, that's why Michael Joyce is asking uh, right now, you know, per family, how much does a toilet come to one toilet? Because there's also the maintenance, because that's another thing. Uh, I guess in Sweden, you're putting a bag. Uh, okay, $12 today. $12 yeah. for the entire toilet? It's $12 in ma in ma uh, for each month today okay. in X Runner. Okay, today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But don't focus on that. Focus on what you can do for, for the people. Because very often you, you talk numbers and um, money, etc. We talk about how we can change the world. Impact. And therefore, it must cost 
us a little. It must cost the, the organization, the, the people, etc. We understand that the people need to have food, etc. So they can't take the cost. We understand that. But we other need to help them so they can have really toilets. The, I think this is wonderful. Just one last curiosity question. Why Peru? Why, why did you choose Peru to try it out? Because there was two driv driven uh, women. Jennifer from Europe. Um, um, Jessica from um, Europe. And um, one from Peru. They contacted me and said, do you have any solution? Because we have a... Uh, expensive toilet because they want to do it by themselves. Yes, I said, I will help you. So I gave them about three, 350 toilets or something. Yes. So they could start to develop X1. Okay. And how long does the composting process take? Because Peru is at a high altitude. Uh, also, often, how long does it take? That is the question I can't answer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Because I don't really know. I have not asked them. <laughs> and has has this uh, uh, have they um, sold anything to uh, for the compost? Are they simply giving it to the farmers? What happens suppose, to the compost? I suppose they give it to the farmers. They okay. are supported by uh, by a foundation from Canada. So the Canadian people pay to uh, uh, tax and give uh, X run uh, money to explore this and expand because okay. we're talking of pe people. Uh, and then there is another question from the audience. In Sweden, this separate model, the cheapest separate model in euros, how much does it cost? Uh, it's about uh, 600, uh, uh, the, not the cheapest one, but the, the villa is about 600 euros in, Six. in, uh, in, uh, in Sweden. Okay. As, but as I said, it's important that we people that have, have the money need to pay for the people that don't have the money. So we need to help them. Okay. Therefore, our product is much, much more expensive in Europe, in US, etc. But other places in the world, much, much, much cheaper. You, can, you can't compare the prices. And they're also asking, uh, because I think they just put me in the chat, uh, what is the life of this toilet? How long does it last? Our guarantee is five years. OK. Yeah. OK. We stand for five years guarantee. Separate uh -huh. do what? Yes. So you understand. Okay. And uh, I think all the people from the developing countries are very curious what kind of people in USA and Europe go for this type of toilet and why? The, the reason is economy, because it's cheaper to, to have this kind of toilet instead of a water toilet and infiltration, etc. You need to empty, uh, uh, you need to empty. Um, holding tanks, etc. Therefore, this can be much, much cheaper. Uh, you cannot have a water toilet because of uh, uh, structure, in infrastructure, because we don't have uh, pipes, etc. You are very, very close to lakes. Therefore, our product is much better. So, so I, I think this is very interesting. At least I know we are going to cooperate with you and uh, uh, the, the, the same um, uh, audience person says that, is it only for those who are camping or are there any, is it also, are there any elite who are going for this kind of model because it's more ecological? Do you also have those kinds of clients who believe yeah. in it? Yes, we have, yes. Okay, yes. then. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a toilet for everybody. It's a toilet for everybody. Yeah, it's a toilet um, for everybody. The, thank you so much. So I, I just, before, before you go, so what is, how is, especially for the site people, what is the solution design that Michael is presenting to the world? Because I think he is, because site stands for, we are all part United Nations University, FinTrust and Site for Society. We are all, in the same 
impact delivery platform. We believe that science, technology, and innovation has a lot to offer the world, but only if they can be melded in a nice engagement platform. And I think this is a good example of this, but you can write to me in the chat, uh, my all the people, you know, which of this is it science, technology, or innovation, or engagement, which of these are included in Michael's solution? Go ahead, right, while we thank Michael and get ready to thank introduce. You thank you very much, Michael. Wow. Bye bye, bye bye. And uh, now we give the floor to Valentine Post. And, uh, but the conversation will continue to Valentine Post and Mr. Sampat Rajkumar. Uh, but I'd like to see, I'm, I'm curious, so please write in the chat which of the site instruments have been used. What do you think? And then we will start with the others. Again, I think Joyce, you better start because uh, you've got to get the others, you know, to unwind themselves and write about the solution. So Joyce, what do you think it is? Okay, so who is going first, Valentin or Sampat? But Joyce, you better write down. <laughs> she's still thinking, she says. Okay. I'm thinking, it's stressing me <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, I think we can, I introduce Michael also because I think he's very interesting for all that we do in India. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Who is... Uh, who will go first, Valentin? Valentin? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Shama. Okay. I, I, I think I'll start. And uh, by way of timing slot, you've given us 20 minutes for the two of us. So I'll try to talk fast and uh, give uh, Rajkumar some more time. He's going to go more into the details of uh, fecal sludge as it's being practiced. And I'll go more to the general things. Uh, am I putting up the slides myself or do well, I get some help? As you this? want. Do you want Adele to put okay. it up or do you want to put it up? Um, I can try. Let, let me just put a try, see if it works. You you have to put share screen. It's a green button next to the. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, but I don't see mine. Um, no. Uh, maybe okay. Adele, if you can do it. The only thing I have to to, uh, to tell you then to, <laughs> to change this, the slide. Anyway, so uh, let me start. Uh, so I'm uh, representing Finnish Mondial. It's a partnership. So you talked about engagement. Now engagement is in our DNA. So um, I'm representing uh, three organizations. One is Waste from the Netherlands, other one is Aqua for All from the Netherlands, third one is Amre Flying Doctors. Uh, all three are based in the Netherlands, but we don't, we are not very active there. So um, Finnish Mondial, as I said, it's an acronym. Uh, Financial Inclusion Improves Sanitation and Health. And uh, normally I would talk about what we do and how we do it, but uh, I've been asked to talk about four or five things primarily. Um, one is maybe Adele, you can go to the next. Uh, and the next. Yeah. So uh, I've been asked the following to why, why even work in India? What's, uh, why bother to partner in India? That was really the question I had. Then why partner with RDO Trust? Why are international partnerships needed at all? What do you look for in international partners? And what's in it for Netherlands or Waste? So uh, why bother to partner in India? Well, as Waste, we've been there for over 30 years. Um, actually, Mr. Suburaman, we've been working with also for quite some time. Uh, RDO has been a, a long-term partner, and we had many, many more. Um, but when we started with uh, this Finnish program, the Finnish approach in 2009, India was one of the countries with the highest open defecation rate in the world. Um, and 
another thing why we are interested in India, it's a country where you easily can innovate, where you can do things and then bring it to scale. Scale itself is quite often seen as an innovation, uh, but doing things at scale also helps you to do your business differently. And you, you are thinking about back office support costs, you're thinking about transaction costs, turnaround times, using all these things which come from regular business that's something which you work, when you work on scale, you can start thinking about these things and acting to it. So we've done a, um, a pretty large program in India together with all our partners, a 200 million euro program, and that we uh, took 10 years to do it. And now we want to do a 400 million program in five years. Next, please. So RDO Trust, uh, why? Uh, well, it's... Uh, a 10 year of partnership. Uh, so we have a history together and it's a really a strong grassroots organization. They have excellent context also uh, with, with the government, particularly, but with the people. They have a good management and they're very much willing to innovate. So uh, the thing we're talking about here is uh, what Raj Kumar, so I won't go into details on the pictures. He'll be talking about it. Next, please. So why are international partnerships needed? Um, yeah, for me, always innovation starts when you have different organizations, different minds coming together. It doesn't, it doesn't start. Uh, I mean, there, there are too few Einsteins in this world. There are a couple of Newtons, but they, they are far, far in between. Most of the time it happens when like-minded people meet and they talk and discuss and maybe come up with new ideas. Uh, we do have access to a lot of best international practices. We uh, are always looking for new ideas. Uh, exchange is very important in this whole context. We, um, yeah, we do bring in multiple sources of expertise, but also financing. If I told you the acronym sense for financial inclusion. So we work a lot on financing streams. And um, we have done 1 million household toilets in uh, sanitation systems, sorry, I shouldn't use the word toilets, in India in the last 10 years. And that has been uh, reaching out to 5 million people. And in addition, uh, many other things, uh, many other benefits have uh, materialized in terms of working days, in terms of uh, gender equality, etc. Next. So this is the way we operate, but I'll, uh, I'll leave that for you to read at, uh, at leisure. Next, please. So what do we look for in international partners? It depends really on the type of partner. For NGOs, we start looking for different things than we look for when we deal with businesses or with governments. So NGOs, the first and foremost, it has to have uh, the, the partner, a potential partner needs to have a like-minded mission and vision. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, now it's, I skipped the previous uh, slide, but that's the, the diamond slide. So we talk, basically, we uh, have four sides of what we call the diamond. We work with communities, which is on top. Uh, thanks, Adele. Uh, then we work with the business side, the financial institutions and the government. And mostly our NGO partners are good at one or two things, not at everything. And we don't want them to be good at everything because everyone has their niche. So some partners are good in working with government. NGOs are typically good in working with communities. And then we have others for working with businesses and financial institutions. Uh, yeah. Uh, so for the businesses, we are, um, yeah, we really need to have an agreement on the vision. Uh, the business rollout, so what are their plans? Are they aligned with ours? And uh, for those who are in the financial service industry, the same thing applies. Um, yeah, with governments, again, it's, it's, all, it's a lot about vision and mission. It needs to, uh, what we want to do needs to fit the government vision. It's never the other way around, of course. The government has an idea, they, have, uh, they want to go somewhere and can be fit in their over, overarching scheme of things. India, of course, a, a, a very clear example. Uh, India, the Indian government came with Swatch Bharat mission and that our program fitted that very well. So we could tweak our program, twist our program in the Indian uh, government program. So what's in it for the Netherlands or for BASED? Why are we doing these things? 
Well, as the Netherlands, as the Dutch government have made a commitment to the SDGs. Uh, the Dutch commitment is 50 million people uh, with safe sanitation by 2030. Um, we have expertise uh, in and particularly in innovation financing for SDG 6. Uh, we do have a number of best practices, or we do have access to best practices, a joint capacity development. We are working together in the, yeah, in, in the Netherlands, it's, you need to work together. As most of you know, we're below sea level. If we don't work together, our dikes would collapse. That's from the historical part. And uh, no, we, yeah, we would simply drown. So it's an uh, absolute necessity that we work together. That's simply in our DNA. Uh, fecal sludge development, that's something we have been uh, from the core of our uh, program from the, the word go. And something where I'm personally very interested in, and we're still at the beginning, is reverse engineering. Working to scale, working on these sort of uh, elements, the data we are going to collect, the information we're going to get, we think we can also do something in the financial services industry in the Netherlands, to give an example. And so these are our ambitions. What I mentioned, uh, it's, it's a big program. Uh, it's covering six countries. And I think I should stop here because I don't want to eat in Rajkumar's time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very insightful. Thanks, uh, Mr. Valentine. So uh, thanks uh, to the organizers of this uh, wonderful uh, uh, workshop. Uh, on the special day of the World Toilet Day. Uh, it, I, I would like to just continue with what uh, Mr. Valentine had just left to me with uh, uh, a big task of uh, giving me a three-year program into uh, 10 minutes or five minutes. Okay. So uh, that's, uh, that's quite something to do with. But uh, let me start with uh, or add to what Mr. Valentine had uh, said about why bother partner in India. Uh, the thing is, uh, from the statistics which I gathered, I thought uh, uh, India uh, with three, uh, 330 million people uh, still practicing open defecation, it's a huge percentage uh, where definitely uh, organizations uh, uh, waste could uh, definitely partner with NGOs and uh, do uh, a, a considerable uh, pro or, or provide a considerable impact on the whole uh, uh, sanitation in the sanitation sector. Now, audio trust. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, the reason why uh, uh, Waste has also partnered with audio trust is this. One, it is because RDO Trust had a, a very uh, strong base of uh, working with uh, almost about 6,000 women self-help groups since 1998. And working with them had brought to light in, in 2008 that women were the first section of the society who are affected without having proper sanitation facilities. And, and therefore, in 2008, when, when uh, we had studied the uh, uh, status of uh, sanitation or mainly the open defecation status of Tamil Nadu, we found uh, very, very, very shocking it was that the Nilgiris, uh, which is a hill uh, mountainous uh, uh, district of Tamil Nadu, uh, ranking second in open defecation. So we, we said, let's launch a campaign for making uh, Neil Greece an open defecation free uh, district by at least 2020. And there was the partnership with Waste, uh, which came in uh, with a lot of awareness programs and trainings for Masons, and then providing, again, providing the financial assistance to the women self-help groups to construct individual household toilets. About 68,000 uh, individual household toilets have been built. 
Simultaneously, there was also a program on building uh, uh, awareness in schools uh, for, uh, uh, for better sanitation facilities, especially where girl, child, girl children were there. And uh, uh, we thought that school children would be very good uh, sanitation ambassadors uh, when you're talking about promoting individual household toilets. So this school sanitation program was also another thing which was launched. And then the other stronger partnership with waste uh, was on, in uh, taking up the securing water for food program, uh, which is a circular economy in sanitation for agriculture initiative. This was the very interesting part of the whole thing where we looked at this entire thing, not only as toilets, but as sanitation system. How do we develop this as a a sanitation system. Uh, next slide, please. So, <coughs> as <coughs> sorry, as uh, uh, Mr. <coughs> Valentine had explained, we were also very keen to follow the uh, approach, the diamond model approach, where uh, we had the community, the customers, as the vegetable growing farmers. Uh, and then we had the financiers who were already with us, working with us with the self groups, various uh, microfinance institutions, uh, agriculture business institutions. And then of course the local government, which is also there, which has been providing a lot of support to us uh, in uh, working with the self help group, as well as in trying to uh, bridge in with the, the Swachh Bharat uh, mission uh, <coughs> assistance to the beneficiaries. But the business part was a tricky business one for us, and it was a learning experience for us. Uh, but during the whole process of this uh, uh, project, which we did under the Securing Water for Food program, uh, the Circular Economy in Sanitation for Agriculture, we were able to uh, capture on organizing farmers, producer companies, and farmers groups who had taken up agri uh, entrepreneurship business. And they also working with the the whole waste sector. We were we called the, we were able to organize the green workers into uh, into partnership firms to take up the production and uh, the sales of co compost as a business entity. Next slide, please. So, so there are the farmers. Uh, uh, this two thousand two hundred forty three. Uh, farmers, uh, vegetable growers, and tea cultivation farmers as our customers. Next one, please. And the financial institutions. And uh, we are happy that we were able to mobilize 231000 uh, dollars as matching funds from all these various. Uh, financial institutions as well as the government uh, institutions during the Securing Water for Food program for the three years from 2017 till 2020. Next slide, please. The government, of course, the, 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 the enormous support provided by the government, mainly when we had entered upon this whole uh, thing of uh, uh, integrated uh, waste management, both uh, uh, solid as well as uh, wet uh, waste and uh, for the production of co-compost we are able to use the the premises of the government which is called as the resource recovery parks and the uh, the this district head we have an IAS officer uh, the madam who's there with us for all the support as well as the assistant director of uh, town panchayats they were warmly welcoming welcoming us to partnership with them and uh, uh, the the production of the co compost is happening in their uh, uh, infrastructure which they have set up next slide please so the business model as i was saying happy to note that the farmers had taken up uh, the whole uh, business of uh, uh, establishing farmers service centers and uh, also taking up the uh, the uh, agree business activities next slide please and the, the women uh, green workers uh, taking up the co compost production that was the slide on the right side and right now the farmers producer companies have also expanded in 
or uh, tying up with the uh, agri business uh, companies and also uh, with an uh, organization called, uh, efresh uh, uh, they have taken up a franchise to to do the marketing of the co compost as well as other inputs which are required by the farmers so that is what i would like to say so the 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 breaking of the the silo to me is more of an integrated waste management and also uh, waste is uh, not uh, not my business but it is everybody's business that's what i think and everybody should contribute their little bit to to do a very integrated uh, management of waste which is also a wealth and therefore ensure the uh, the circular economy and uh, one thing what we are proud of the next slide please uh, we are proud of is that our accomplishment is there we were able to cater to 2243 um, farmers and then and then also the uh, the, uh, the earlier whatever i mentioned the finances which we have been able to ra uh, raise through various financial institutions and the government support in uh, and taking up the production of co-compost in their infrastructure and also the partnership with various institutions the next slide next next please the next one please so we have 18 partners in the consortium that's the silo which we are talking about again it's not only technical on uh, integrated waste management it's also uh, a, a very uh, integrated partnership uh, which uh, has to take place for anything to be more successful and sustainable i think so with that i say thank you next slide please and uh, any questions i'm ready to answer thank you i think uh, uh, it was wonderful and again you're going to both get uh, best marks for being on time so i think uh, i will first throw the floor open to questions and then if nobody pops up a question i've got a few of my own of course to ask okay joyce go ahead yes i have a question and oh, by the way thank you very much for the presentation very insightful um my question is um to uh, mr rajkumar and it's about them for me i i wrote about mental silo the silos is something the mentality how people think and i come from kenya and i have seen you so oh, you have said you work with over 2000 vegetable growers and um from my history what i know is that getting people to work with what was formerly waste you know it's like a barrier so telling them this used to be you know <laughs> uh, waste and then you will make food of it if how do you go about that is there do you have also like some um education you know capacitation systems or how do you go about that thank you uh so i i can just i can just answer that a little bit a little uh it 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 was a challenge of course uh, but uh, but what has happened is uh, see uh even our own uh, people who have been working with us uh, the the staff who have been working with us uh, going and talking to farmers saying that here is a co compost which is prepared from uh, fecal sludge and uh, please use it uh, 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 it is good for the crop and thing like that, you know a, and uh, they were themselves feeling a little uh, uh, hesitant to do that but it was so shocking that when we met the farmers they said see we've been practicing open defecation where was this waste going into our fields so therefore we don't have any hesitation in in uh, it, that our crops are grown with this waste or whatever it is but then uh when we had uh, uh the best part of the whole breakthrough was uh, when we worked with a, a group of uh, farmers here we have the caste system you know different castes are there in india and uh, we have a lingayat caste which is that means they are like the brahmins this particular village did the breakthrough in the whole thing because these farmers were ready to take the co-compost produce because they they said 
uh, exposure was provided to them to come and see the way uh, how the co compost is prepared. The fecal sludge, so it's safe, number one. Then also the way it is incorporated along with the wet waste. But two, number three, the co compost is being sent for analysis before it is being distributed to the farmers to ensure that it has the basic parameters. Uh, the nutrient parameters, the heavy metal parameters are met, and the most important of the, the pathogens. And so this was something which the farmers said, this is very safe. So, so even, the, the, even the green workers, they were saying, we safe to handle this waste. So a lot of exposure program, of course, a lot of trainings, and also uh, the farmer to farmer, which is more acceptable. No? So uh, that's how we managed to break through this. I have a question. <clears throat> I have a question. Please, yes. Okay. Uh, is the, I like what you've just presented. I'm from Nigeria. And you know, I, Nigeria I, has over 200 million uh, people. It's the largest black race in Africa. And as you've seen now, if you followed our presentation before this one where we, we, over 40 something million people in Nigeria still practice OD. And uh, actually I'm a cooperative farmer. I have a cooperative in my local government registered in my state. And also we, we I'm, I'm one of the person representing uh, the cooperative council in my local government. You see what you've just presented is going to help Nigerians. And I don't know, we have a lot of resources based on the <laughs> The, 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 the physics that is this was as a material. Uh, now I want to know, is there any how you can send your company to Nigeria so that we start working to make these things work for us all over the world? And also, uh, I, I can't like a, a, a liquid uh, organic fertilizer too. Can it be extracted from this physics too? Can you have something like liquid organic fertilizer from this? Uh, because we've been using uh, other organic fertilizers. I don't want to mention any of them. We've been using it in the field. And then I believe this uh, compost manual from the physicists can help us. We have a lot, a, a very large resources. So I want to know, is there any how it's going to work in Nigeria? I know it's going to work, but can you extend this to Nigeria so that we start production and then get government connected with this as a member of WASHCOM? We can make this work. And from here, we can also export to other countries. I would like uh, Mr. Valentine to answer. Yes, uh, yes, Valentine, <laughs> come on. Yeah, uh, yes, please. Yeah, please. <laughs> okay, so, um, this is open yeah, invitation. Actually, uh, what, <laughs> uh, what Raj Kumar described was now he's making co-compost, and co-compost is a um, is a, not a fertilizer. It's a compost, so it's a soil conditioner. Uh, it has an advantage over regular compost that it contains more nutrients. That's some of the properties of a fertilizer. Uh, we have it now as a product um, which is yeah, really similar to compost. It feels like compost. Uh, I think we're there now at that stage, right, Rajkumar? It used to be a little dry, but now it should be better, I think. Um, but yeah, to, to, to make a liquid fertilizer, you talk about something else. That would be more like uh, taking the urine separately, like what they do from uh, South Africa. So that is really like liquid fertilizer. We're not doing that. That you can make from urine. Here's a combination of fecal matter and urine and wash water and everything that goes into a treatment plant, is dried there, taken out, and then uh, processed together with organic solid waste. So that's what we have. Yes, that you can use it in Nigeria, there's no doubt about it. And this is not rocket science, fortunately. It is something which is very much, uh, yeah, replicable, I would say. The, the, the crux of the matter is you need to have farmers, you need to have clients, you need to think like a business. So you're making a product out of waste and the, the, I think one of the earlier uh, questions already on now, how is this, uh, how are people going to respond to it from Kenya? And so we're setting up a similar plant in Kenya as well, and we're going to face exactly the same question. How this is going to be addressed in Kenya? I'm not really sure, but we'll see it when we get there. First, we make the product, then people see the product, 
they they start thinking, okay, well, this is actually not what I suspected it to be. It smells very nice. It uh, it feels very nice. And actually, it when you apply it to the soil, the plants actually like it, and the soil likes it. And that's important because we have degraded soils everywhere. And this is really what is uh, quite critical in the whole climate discussion we're having uh, globally. We find that soils, when uh, when they are degrading, they cannot hold water uh, very well. So healthy soils can hold much more water and require less chemical fertilizer. So there's there's a big advantage if this can be applied. What is the interesting part from what Rajkumar said? These are small plants. These are not very costly plants. And the reason why it's there, you don't want to transport waste or the bulky uh, compost over very long distances. So by nature, this will be small, small in size. But then since we would like to do things at a bigger scale, we just replicate the same thing over and over and over again. And then you also get scale. I'm not sure if I answered your question 100%, but I, I tried. Are there any other questions? Uh... Uh, okay, then I, I, I think, have... Yeah, he has answered my question. As I know, I have a very high contact with the Ministry of Agriculture, both in my state and uh, so I, if this can uh, come to Nigeria and then I'll be proud that uh, attending this meeting that I've brought something great to my country as well, looking at the business aspect of it. Uh, I know it's going to work. So maybe after this, we'll start chatting on how to make it work in Nigeria. I really have been working with the Ministry of Agriculture the commissioners, the government of my state, know I'm existing because I have one of the largest, most active cooperative in my state. You understand? This is so lovely. All the best. Uh, thank you. That was this lovely. Is, yeah. Yeah. And we, I'll give everybody your email and all that. I've got two okay. quick questions. Uh, Valentin, I was fascinated by your statement about reverse engineering. So I was kind of wondering how they experience in developing countries can uh, yield something for Europe. And then for Mr. Sampath Kumar, let me, because I'm telling both the questions so that if you want to add anything to either question, it'll be good. Uh, you know, in USA first, that there were, there were some regulation put on compost as the, you know, the hippies, uh, you know, the, the cool people on California, they were the ones doing all this composting, human waste composting and all that. But regulation came when a lot of people eating spinach made from that, using that compost uh, got sick. Then some years back, I remember similarly, cucumber was coming from Hungary. It had been grown in some compost with pathogens. So I'm so happy that these safety tests are done. I, I did not know that these uh, that there was any kind of, is there any regulation or are you doing this voluntarily? So reverse, reverse engineering and safety of uh, fecal waste-based compost. Okay, well, actually I can combine the two. So um, reverse engineering, on, uh, as you know, you cannot do this in Europe. It's not allowed. The EU has uh, banned uh, use of human waste in agriculture. So trying this out in other countries and then, because this is a policy decision, which is based on something which they thought at that time was the right thing, but policies can also be changed. But we need compelling evidence. Now, if you can't change, we, we can't bring out the evidence in Europe because we simply, we're not allowed to. We can't do it even on a pilot basis. So how does the reverse engineering, in my view, works? If we can show in other countries that it's absolutely safe and it does contribute to a better soil, it does contribute to improved agricultural practices, it does improve to a better carbon footprint of agriculture, then we can bring that back to Europe and start a discussion there. It won't work very well, I must confess, in the Netherlands because we are a nutrient rich country. We have too far too many cows and uh, what we have, uh, sheep and uh, no, not sheep so much, chicken and uh, what's that, pigs. So we have too much nutrients ourselves. So Holland is a nutrient surplus, but there are other parts of Europe, um, 
Spain, France, where, where it should certainly be feasible to do it. So that's one part of reverse engineering. The other part, it's more like uh, that's very f advanced uh, financial engineering. So I just leave that uh, to it. <laughs> That's fair enough because I know that the the financial engineering is also very very important and it is it might give rise to new innovative packages. Sampat, uh, I mean, uh, far, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to just uh, add, add to the 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 part of uh, uh, how how are we ensuring this uh, the quality parameters of uh, the co compost which is being used uh, for. Uh, uh, the uh, vegetable cultivation. Now, uh, uh, he, uh, unfortunately, we were also struggling a lot to see whether the government has got any regulation on uh, the uh, compost or uh, manure prepared with human sludge. But there was no guidelines till now, as far as I, uh, we are, uh, we can see. So what we did is uh, during the course of this whole project. We ourselves came out with 22 parameters. It was combining the parameters of WHO, the, uh, uh, the uh, Pollution Control Board parameters, and the EU uh, parameters. We had combined all of them and made a set of uh, 22 uh, uh, parameters for testing the co-compost. And we've uh, found that that those the, all the 22 parameters were fair enough or sound enough for us to start with because there was nothing available so for us to work on and uh, right now that is what we are using and uh, uh, even we are trying to see if our policy makers can have a look at it and give us more suggestions on uh, what they can tell us uh, because uh, till now uh, Co-compost co prepared with human fecal sludge does not have any standard standardization or parameters uh, put forth. Thank you so much. I think that is a that is a policy innovation in the making. Uh, you know, so you the I I know the audience has been very patient. Also, thank you. I'd like to thank the speakers. I'd like to thank the audience, and I think we have a well deserved little stretching break for three minutes Thank do you. come back okay do come back don't go away because we have got two policy makers with us and now you will hear about this the biggest most most challenging most uh, most unimaginable policy experiment that's being taken in the developing world that's in india so we want to we want you to share that because that will yield insights. And uh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Mr. Sampat Kumar. Thanks, thanks. Sir Raj Kumar, should we, because it's Sampat can Raj Kumar, Valentin and Michael. Thank you. Thank you. So be back in, in two, three minutes, okay? Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I think uh, if anybody is out there, I usually do something uh, very, no, you can go and drink your water. Even I'm uh, after the two things, because I usually, I, otherwise I'm going to ask Green to do a Nigerian dance and we will all follow him. That's what I wanted to say. Nuke, teach us something. Teach us some new dance. <laughs> if you, I'm coming back.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Sampath Kumar. I'm sure you would not have heard before a Carnatic music raga explaining the <laughs> different types yes. of toilets. <laughs> you know. really nice. yeah. That's innovative there. <laughs> <laughs> so now we are in the last part of our Topol Toilet Day festivities. And we are moving to another part of the world. India is a subcontinent, it's not a country. So just like there is enormous diversity between different uh, European countries, we have enormous uh, diversity in India between the different states. And we are very pleased to have today speakers from Madhya Pradesh, which has really becoming uh, a front runner in uh, becoming a clean, green, and blue state, referring to uh, the, the cleanliness in the environment and therefore promoting uh, the biodiversity and the plant life, and of course, the purity in water. So I'd like to give the floor to Raja, Dr. Raja Venkatramani. Uh, you, are on, uh, you are on, Raja. Maybe yeah, we thank can... You. Uh, we will remove the, I don't know how to remove the, the pointers, Adele, I'm if you could put the, if you could share your screen. He's going to, Raja is going to explain the Indian experiment. And it is, uh, it, it is an experiment that is akin to the Green Revolution. India led the green revolution in the developing world, and it is now leading the circular economy uh, revolution. And uh, we are made. He will tell about the challenges and the progress made. Right. Thank you. you. Can start. Yes, uh, please. The idea here is to give a, a very quick bird's eye view or snapshot view of the efforts being made in what we are calling as. Uh, uh, presently the world's largest transformational effort in uh, terms of uh, uh, toilet, open defecation management, or uh, I mean prevention and cleanliness. So this mission launched in uh, officially in uh, 2014 is called the Swachh Bharat Mission, which uh, in English translates as the Clean India Mission. In this context, just wanted to mention about Valentin mentioned, Mr. Rajkumar mentioned about the large, uh, uh, huge numbers of people uh, facing with the, the problem of open defecation in the absence of alternate available facilities. Before this program started, the whole idea was that, I mean, not idea, the whole uh, uh, perception is that maybe the numbers were in the region of about 500 million. But this has considerably reduced, but various challenges remain. This cleanliness mission combines uh, both trying to make the country open defecation free and manage the solid waste management in a much more improved manner. But since today we are focusing on toilets in World Toilet Day, I am taking up those aspects relating to uh, what are the efforts in regard to toilet and uh, waste management linked to toilets. So the Swachh Bharat mission, Clean India mission comprises both urban and rural. The rural is called Grami. The open defecation aspect is focused on toilets, which has three types of toilets, which the government is trying to fund, which is individual household toilets, community toilets and public toilets. And there are three levels of maturity in our planning. One is the focus initially on toilets, which we call as ODF planning. The second is ODF plus, which is toilets. And uh, somehow there should be improved water maintenance and hygiene. And then we have ODF plus plus, which is an even higher level where there is improved sludge and septage management. Presently, we say that we have largely achieved ODF. We will talk about uh, the uh, issues around that. And the aspiration is to move to ODF plus and ODF plus plus. Next, please. We said it started in 
2014, and to the extent we are focusing on toilets, the buzzword in the initial phase was more toilets, get into toilets. And we are not saying that uh, that alone is uh, 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 solves the whole problem, but it's, it's an important part of the solution. So rural toilets, there has been massive building of maybe 90 to 100 million. Urban, they say about 8 to 10 million. But along with toilets, the key aspects have been how to uh, uh, improve actual usage and how to promote avoidance of manual scavenging, which is related to absence of proper uh, toilets. In the present phase, we are looking at how do we make all these toilets sustainable? So in answering the questions of sustainability, there is more attention being paid to, is there water available? Do we have to uh, transform and retrofit existing toilets which have been constructed in a hurry? And there is a closer attention to technology issues. Now, this is in a very nascent stage. So in this phase, the entire, the new buzzword is solid and liquid waste management. A major, no, uh, the earlier slide, please. Yeah, earlier slide. In what way is this different from the earlier efforts? The key thing is that there has been very serious political signaling right from the prime minister to the heads of all the states who are called chief ministers to the major bureaucrats. All of them are signaling and are pushing forward this, uh, this uh, effort for a Clean India uh, mission. Then the second major new initiative has been in trying to promote competition among cities. There is an annual ranking among cities, which is called as Sarva Sarvekshan. A third important component has been, how do we transform you know, creation of awareness and uh, changing behavioral patterns by uh, 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 moving from, from you know, top level government advertisements and things like that to more community driven initiatives. Next please. So there have been various toolkits. They are available on the website. The, the one which does the annual ranking of uh, uh, cities is called as, uh, in terms of cleanliness, is called as the Swatch Sarvekshan 2021. It's available on the website. These are other toolkits also available on website for those who may be interested, which tell how the government is trying to push the initiative forward. Next, please. This just gives a background to the scoring criteria very broadly, uh, which is practiced by the server Sarvekshan. Now on the right-hand side, I have mentioned that this covers solid and liquid waste management, which includes the toilet waste. Uh, there are three types of uh, categories. One is service levels, where, where the municipality uh, gives its own assessment as to what are the standards it is uh, following in terms of collection, transportation, processing, disposal, etc. Then a second category is uh, third party certification. And the third aspect is trying to engage directly with the citizens in getting his feedback and then uh, seeing to what extent a uh, new app, which is being uh, uh, popularized is being used. And there are also marks for innovation and best practices. Details relating to how this links up with maybe toilet and related fecal search management will be provided by my colleague, uh, Mr. Amit Mishra subsequently. Next, please. Yeah, I just want to mention that um, on behalf of uh, 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 the two government officials who will be speaking, one is uh, Mr. Roshan Kumar, Roshan Kumar Singh, who is IAS from our administrative services. He is the CEO of what we call as the Zilla Panchayat Khandwa. And uh, uh, this is focused on the rural areas at the district level. And uh, there are a number of villages uh, within his uh, panchayat. And the total population is about 1 million, considering all the villages put together. And the second speaker, if he may not be there, we will be carrying some messages on his behalf, represents uh, the experience of a city, which is Chinwara, Mr. Himanshu Singh, 
and uh, the population of the city is approximately uh, 250,000 presently, officially. And uh, they both invite all participants, especially on the technical side, to suggest uh, and experiment and make their cities and rural areas into living laboratories. We feel that many of the initiatives mentioned here sound very interesting. And if we can, it can be facilitated through FinTrust and uh, Fusion. The CEO of the organization is closely working with these government officials and can facilitate various forms of experimentation and uh, dissemination. Thank you. Thank you, Raja. Thank you. And so I think that uh, this is actually playing out to our students because I had asked everyone to say something about what the academic community could do. So I guess that this is another call later on. Uh, Mr. Sampat Rajkumar, maybe you can also say something. But first, does anyone have any questions for Raja or comments? Uh, okay, then I'm going to ask you, Raja. Uh, right. The thing is, uh, is this the first time the Indian government is trying to carry out such transformative change? Or have there been other initiatives in the past which, which have been undertaken? Because certainly it's a very courageous to bring sanitation uh, and cleanliness to the table, the, the official table for a national mission. But have there been others which have been also trying to transform? Yes, there have been programs in the past and uh, we have also been associated with uh, some of them. And uh, 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 they have been driven by the central government ministries. For example, the urban ministry would uh, uh, fund various projects and programs, but it was a, as a matter of routine. And uh, in the rural side, we had a program called Total Sanitation Campaign. And uh, before that, so that lasted about 20 years. And before that, uh, uh, previous programs, but none of them had the imprint of the prime minister saying that this is most important and uh, appealing. It was not uh, just a push down, appealing to both self-respect and giving confidence that it is possible. And also it is new in the sense that he's combining all aspects or the program combines all aspects of cleanliness. Uh, uh, toilets is one aspect and toilets was uh, a proxy initially. One of the challenges is it was a proxy for making the country open defecation free. There's a different issue of people wondering, mere construction of toilets, does it help? What I want to emphasize here again is that uh, uh, construction of toilets was the initial buzzword. The present buzzword is that that is not enough. And we do have to manage the uh, uh, system as a whole, which is why the emphasis on solid and liquid waste management. So there is an awareness in this. And I want to raise one more point, last point, if I may be permitted, again, on behalf of uh, the commissioner, Mr. Himanshu Singh, in case he gets delayed, which is that uh, worldwide, in fact, in the earlier session also, uh, I'm just relating to it, we have discussions on toilets to prevent uh, uh, address defecation problem. And we have issues, uh, discussions relating to a safe a fecal sludge management or a, a sewerage system as an alternative solution. Now, but there has been less discussion on what about the actual cleaning process of the uh, existing or planned for uh, septage management systems as well as sewerage systems. This is also related to manual scavenging or human contact with fecal matter. Now in the cleaning part, if we are saying we're making toilets, fine, right, we are progressing. But if you're not addressing this thing of the cleaning process, because the cleaning pro uh, process is also not internalized and made better, then it is as good as a human, uh, I mean, open defecation because you're having human contact with the uh, uh, fecal matter. Now to address this only today, which is World Toilet Day, the union government has come out with an open challenge, again, wanting cities to compete, and we hope that in Madhya Pradesh, we can work with the government with uh, you know, some of the participants here. Can you come up with better solutions for uh, uh, non-human contact in cleaning, whether sewerage systems 
or septic tanks or any other system. This so is it's a challenge and there will be awards for this. And the challenge will be implemented over, I think, seven, eight months. Clock starts today. Thank so you. We, this, is, this is a very interesting thing. We will put it out also in our World Toilet Day outputs if you can give us the links because nice. this if this is an international challenge it is uh, it is very much uh, worthwhile and uh, thank you so much it reminds me right now all the western governments though it's not official there is a race now for finding the vaccine for the coronavirus and companies are all competing and it's a winner takes all prize and I'm very, very happy. And I'm sure Nuke would be very happy. All our friends from Africa would be very happy that we are also giving attention to the unglamorous topic of uh, human fecal management because we are trying to adopt the development pattern of Western countries that they developed over 200 years in a matter of 20, 30 years. It's a huge challenge to have this behavioral change and uh, manage. Thank you so much. Thank now, you. I think we'll be uh, showing the first video. Uh, Anurag, I'm going to ask you a question or Amit, if you can show your face. Okay, I'm going to ask a question. Why is everybody so busy in India to last since last week? Everybody is so busy. What's happening? Can you tell me Anurag? That's oh, why we, we are getting... Uh, basically, in India, we have had... Uh, this is the time for uh, a series of uh, festivals. Uh, there is Diwali, which is one of the biggest festivals in North India, and it's also uh, celebrated in other parts of India. It's basically uh, um, uh, celebrated to... Uh, it's called the Festival of Light, and it's uh, you can put it as equivalent to Christmas for... Uh, Western part of the country. And then in addition to that, uh, there is another festival called Chhat uh, that basically is uh, done, uh, is more prominent in Northern part of India and more uh, commonly in Madhya Pradesh, in Bihar, in Eastern UP uh, and uh, nearby areas uh, in which the mothers, uh, they, they, uh, uh, they don't eat, they, they, they keep a fast uh, for the longer life of and uh, longer and lengthier life of their children. So you and see, that's why... Bhaiduj, Bhaiduj also, please. Yeah, Bhai oh, Duj I also. think maybe <laughs> the thing is, oh, that is also coming. That, so it's that's like, done. you know... It, it's that's done that. on the second day of uh, Diwali. Okay, so it's like asking Western... Sisters to brothers, yeah. You know, for a good thing like this, it's like asking all the leaders. You know? uh, season, I think. <laughs> yes, this is a season, festival season. And all the government people, they are on duty to ensure social distancing. So they and are facing... there are very huge public gatherings on, on uh, chat. So today and tomorrow, um, the public officials will be very busy. That's, that, that's why we are very, very grateful for the videos that they granted us. Uh, this will be played now and then we will hear Mr. Amit yeah. and perhaps the, Mr. Himanshu. We are very happy to have with us Mr. Raushan Kumar Singh, who is the CEO of a number of villages with a total population amounting to more than 1.3 million. By CEO, it means that he is responsible for the entire rural development of the region, okay? And today being World Toilet Day, we will focus on what is meant by WASH, that is sanitation, waste management, hygiene behavior, water, all of it put together, okay. Uh, Mr. Raushan has a background in civil engineering and he entered the Indian Administrative Service in 2015. And he's in a state called Madhya Pradesh about which Amit, Mr. Amit Mishra had just explained to us. 
thank you, Mr. Raushan, for being with us today. And I see that you are wearing the mask. I'm not wearing the mask. One up for you. So my first question is, how are you managing the enormity of the task of making uh, 1.3 million people, many of whom did not have toilets before 10 years? How are you making them open, defecation free and clean? Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, the introduction, ma'am. Uh, uh, I would start with uh, 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 thanking you all for giving me this time. Uh, basically, uh, in uh, sanitation, uh, the, the first and foremost uh, um, step was taken by our Honorable Prime Minister in 2014 when he launched uh, Swachh Bharat Mission and uh, uh, the target was to make uh, all the all the districts of the country by 2019 as open defecation free. And uh, a massive campaign was undertook and uh, uh, with the help of uh, all the you know, social societies and uh, uh, people of the villages and uh, then the uh, then the government was with us and uh, we undertook a survey and we identified how many households are without toilet and uh, there was there were two things the first thing is to build the infrastructure that is to provide individual household toilet to the families and the second was uh, to bring in the behavioral change because you know in our country uh, the, the biggest challenge was to uh, teach them to to use the toilet and uh, the benefits of the uh, hygiene you know because later on uh, some of the instances uh, where there when the toilet was there and people were not using it so so uh, a huge a huge work was done in uh, you know bringing behavioral change and we did a lot of ic activities we we uh, uh, collaborated with uh, civil societies and a lot of uh, uh, campaigns like uh, evening topaz and uh, nookers these things were carried out and it was a huge uh, you know work uh, taken out and uh, fortunately our district with uh, 422 gram panchayats was declared open defecation free in 2018 and after that also uh, the challenge was to prevent the fallback and which we did and uh, uh, again, a survey uh, sponsored by World Bank was undertook, and we identified uh, 9,000 uh, left out beneficiaries this year. Uh, in 2020, we identified 9,000 beneficiaries were without toilet, and uh, we constructed in a record time of uh, you know what, one month. And uh, uh, this year, in this uh, COVID uh, outbreak, uh, government of India, you know, because our district saw a huge number of uh, migrants coming uh, from big cities. So uh, some 200 uh, community toilets were provided to us and uh, within a span of 120 days, we constructed those toilets and they are running and functional. So uh, these are some of the ways we, we uh, uh, introduced for the district, which are helping us and uh, we are maintaining the ODF status. And uh, the thing is, in behavioral change, you mentioned the word tofa and nukad. What are they, please? Uh, uh, Nukkar and Chopal. Chopal is the, you know, uh, in Indian scenario, uh, in, in our villages, this, this is, there is culture of uh, uh, sitting uh, in a group of uh, 10 to 20 people at some, some of the common locations like, uh, uh, you know, uh, the temple place or maybe uh, uh, under some tree or maybe the Gram Panchayat. So uh, in, in Chopal's, we organized uh, this kind of IC activities where we introduced uh, the benefits of toilets. We showed some video to them. Uh, we, we role played and, uh, you know, uh, introduced the use of toilets and uh, demonstrated uh, the benefits of the toilets, not only uh, the hygiene factor, there are other factors like uh, you must be aware about the uh, crimes which uh, uh, female in our countries have to face when they go out. So uh, we uh, we worked on all the factors and uh, we tried to you know uh, persuade uh, these people to use toilets and construct toilets. So um, the chopals and lookers help a lot, and we are thankful to the civil societies for helping us in that. So the the thing is, what is the allocation of responsibilities? That is, are all these resources provided? for construction of toilets first let's you let's take it one by one as you said for the construction of toilets so you know do people have to pay is it entirely provided by the state is there international help 
And second, for the behavioral aspect, uh, do you partner with others uh, or any other local entities helping you in this effort? And sir, just speak into the mic, please, so that because this is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. See, uh, for 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 constructions of individual household toilets, uh, government uh, um, provided us with a location, and uh, a sum of rupees twelve thousand was provided to each beneficiary for constructing his individual household toilet. And uh, uh, there, there, there were no nothing uh, was uh, to be paid by the beneficiary. Government provided all the uh, funds uh, for constructing the toilets. There were some eligibility criteria, like uh, we have a, a poverty line criteria. So uh, those those households which were below poverty line, and uh, those households which we are which are in uh, uh, scheduled tribes and scheduled castes category, they were uh, preferred. And uh, those households which have some kind of uh, uh, the marginal farmers which have small uh, uh, land holdings, they were also preferred. So this kind of prefer, preferred list was prepared, and uh, based on that list. Uh, we we chose the we selected the beneficiaries and then uh, fund was provided to them. And uh, regarding um, uh, you know IC activities awareness campaign, uh, a, a lot of stakeholders were there. Civil societies, some of the uh, NGOs like Samarthan and uh, uh, other such uh, uh, local level groups are there. Uh, though they they, they uh, you know helped us a lot. We have groups from NCC, NSS, and uh, we have we have different departments also. Uh, governments, uh, teachers, and uh, anganwadi karikarta health workers—they all uh, stepped in, and a movement was, uh, you know, in place. So that that made it possible. That is that is wonderful. So who prepared all these IEC materials? Because you have to train the trainers, right? At these. Uh... Uh, a detailed a detailed uh, you know, uh, plan was made, and uh, uh, under the government of India, there was uh, this ministry. Uh, of uh, sanitation and hygiene, and at state level we have uh, Swachh Bharat Mission cell, and at at each each, the, each of the districts we have uh, a Swachh Bharat Mission office. So uh, the IC materials were uh, prepared at all the levels, the government of India and the state level and district level. And as I said, we have a number of uh, civil societies. They also chipped in with uh, their uh, kind of you know. Um, Materials and one one thing was very important. Our district have a lot of uh, you know tribal population, so uh, uh, the 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 households speak Korku language and uh, uh, Saharia language. These kind of languages are uh, being spoken here. So uh, with the help of local teachers and uh, we have a, 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 a teacher training institute that's called Dite. So with the help of uh, Dite and local teachers, we came up with uh, uh, we came up with a translated uh, material. Um, you know, uh, audio visual. Group, uh, uh, yep, with the local language and these these help you know to uh, to make a make a connect with the tribal population so that they understand what we are what we are trying to project uh, to them. This is very good. Now, what about citizens, especially men? Because you see, especially in rural areas where space is not a problem and there are trees and so forth, it's very difficult to get the men to use toilets. Did you have yeah, any? Yeah. Strategy. Yeah, that, that was a major challenge. We had a lot of groups. We had uh, morning morning monitoring groups. We have we had uh, ch child groups. We had uh, you know uh, ladies groups. So in the morning in the morning when people used to go out because of their habits, they used to say that no until and unless I go to a walk, I am not able to you know do my uh, you know do attend my uh, nature's call and these things. So uh, we had a, a surveillance kind of groups and uh, you know a, a whistling group. So whenever people used to go out with the bottles or you know some other uh, utensils in their hand, we used to stop them and we used to you know um, persuade them. Some uh, naming shaming was also done and uh, a continued effort for for months to uh, you know uh, visit these these groups. Kind of vigilance groups were organized in the in the in the panchayat. So uh, this this took uh, a lot of effort from all the you know um, uh, residents of the villages. Now you make it seem as if you know you just it's very simple and you just put the resources in and the outcome comes out. Is it as simple as this? Did you face any challenges? Yeah.
this ship is very much uh, you know confident about that committed about that so the way is easier you have a focus you have a goal so uh, you you just need to build a team and involve people because until unless people are involved it's not possible to achieve this kind of uh, you know uh, target so um, uh, definitely it was it was difficult but since the commitment commitment was very high and we had to reach the goal we didn't have any funding issues so it was it was you know um, achieved but but the, the but the job was not easy and uh, a lot of difficulties were faced in that this is this is a great story and i i i want a true story so it's not even a story it's a great uh, true narrative is there anything we can do as uh, academics to help in this process to make it sustainable and uh, especially what can uh, is there any role any way international students can help any way that the united nations university can help the government achieve this definitely i'll i'll just cite uh, one of the you know experiences uh, the twin pit method which was very popular in this uh, individual household uh, construction was new to us and uh, people are in habit of constructing uh, the conventional septic tanks which are quite uh, large and they they uh, cause a lot of cost in that so people are in the habit of constructing those uh, septic tanks so when this uh, twin pit was introduced they were not uh, you know um, agreeing with that and they saying you know it will not work but it worked and it is very successful it's it's currently going on so these kind of technologies which were very you know uh, cost effective and easy to construct it took less time so these kind of new technologies always help and i just wanted to demonstrate how you know uh, new new things new technologies help us in achieving any of our goals so such kind of works Uh, or or maybe some treatment technology which is very you know um, uh, cost effective and takes less less kind of space these things so they always help so uh, i am very thankful to uh, you know you so that you are working in that and any any new work any any uh, non conventional approach which will save resources and which will save our efforts is welcome thank you very much thank you so now you you saw how it is inside a government uh, uh, office now governments work with a lot of social enterprises to achieve their targets and so we have the pleasure of presenting to you mr amit misra who is an entrepreneur social a social enterprise he's trying to combine like valentine said to make it you need to have uh, sustainability from along different dimensions so amit is going to explain what he does and also the context to you and then we'll take questions amit thank you uh, uh anurag can we have our presentation please so first of all i would like to introduce myself i am amit mishra and uh, uh, we have an organization called fusion waste management and uh, we are working with the you know uh, the ulvs and we have, we are basically uh, working in mp madhya pradesh india and we are working with two major ulvs apart from that you know we are working with rural government also what is a so ulb please amit ULB, can you explain ulb is urban local body so basically it's uh, municipalities uh, urban local bodies is you know we have three categories of uh, you know uh, urban local bodies one is municipal corporation then municipality and then municipal panchayat so these are the three on the basis of the you know the population the categories has been designed and decided next please so uh, as uh, dr raja said and as our uh, you know the the earlier speakers also you know mentioned about the clean india mission how we work you know in the state the 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 mission was introduced by the central government then it comes to the state government and then we are the implementing in the state government is you know they're giving it to the divisions we have an mp we have 10 divisions and 52 districts urban local governments in basically we have two parts one is the urban another one is the rural 
So rural is being governed by the Jilla Panchayat. We have 52 Jilla Panchayats. And the below, there is a Gram Panchayat. We have 23,922 uh, Gram Panchayats in the rural government governance. In the uh, urban part, you know, we have got 366 ULBs, urban local bodies in Madhya Pradesh, which includes all, you know, 16 municipal corporation and then the, the municipality and the municipal panchayats also are there. Next, please. So, uh, be, uh, this in the Clean India Mission, uh, we are in Madhya Pradesh and Indore is in uh, the city has got the uh, all India first rank, and this is the fourth, fifth time they have got the uh, fourth time they have got the rank, and uh, you know, and we work with the Khandwa Municipal Corporation, which is in, also in uh, the Madhya Pradesh, uh, which comes under Indore Division. A total population of about two hundred seventy-seven thirty-eight uh, thousand, and the you know uh, the early rank of Khandwa was uh, ninety-four, and in a uh, last year, I means we we. Took, uh, we, we are working with Khandwa since 2020. So, in uh, uh, over last year, uh, the you know they have got uh, 21st rank in 2020 survection, uh, uh, 2020 sur survection. Soon we'll be working with. Uh, we have started working with the Chinwara Municipal Corporation, and uh, we are also uh, working with the Khandwa Jilla Panchayat, where we have a plan to develop a model village in you know in sanitation management. The total population of that uh, jilla, uh, that village is 5,741. Next, please. These are the activities which we are focusing. See, we are working uh, on fecal sludge management, uh, the waste, uh, the you know dry waste management, the wet waste management, entire SWM we are taking care of. And these are some of glimpse of the some activities what we are doing in the on the ground. Next, please. So uh, the criteria today is because today is a world toilet day. So I'll give you some, uh, uh, you know, how we are managing and how we have got the ODF plus plus and the certification. Uh, in our all the toilets, you know, all the urinals and toilets, we are giving people, you know, there is a feedback uh, feedback mechanism is there. So we are giving, we are getting the feedback indicators in, you know, yes or no types of answers. Uh, and you know the FSTP is also important for the ODF plus plus uh, as stated by Dr. Raja as stated by Dr. Raja. Apart from that, the what percentage of fecal uh, fecal sludge collected in sewage generated households, commercial establishment, and FSTP? You know, it reused. So there is another category which we are we are trying to move for Chandwara. We are working on it. It's called water plus where we have to showcase and we have to you know uh, use reuse of 100% water supplied the waste water we have to reuse either through stps or through fstps you know we'll have to you know design some mechanism how to reuse the you know waste water all kinds of waste water then the desludging operators we are you know we are we are building the capacity of desludging operators also with all kinds of pp equipment how to desludge all kinds of you know activities and you know the 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 orientation uh, you know uh, what uh, do's and don'ts all kinds of you know we are in you know uh, helping them to you know uh, improve their uh, uh, the capacity also, the uh, the about the public toilets and urinals, we have the uh, the app such called Swachta app, which is uh, you know uh, which is run by the uh, which 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 is developed by the government of India, and through that app, we are you know taking care of the complaints given by the uh, the the citizens. So we are resolving the complaints in you know 24 uh, in within 24 hours. Thank you. So. Thank you very much, Amit. Thank you. Yeah. Shama, just one comment. Yeah. Yes, go yeah. ahead. The last five indicators or uh, items which are shown by Amit, just want to additionally affirm that these are part of the ranking criteria yeah. of maybe cities. You can, if you can show your video, maybe. Oh, sorry. So, yeah. So this is... no. It, it's part so, of the ranking system. So when you say what is different from an earlier time, putting these indicators... Now, there are issues we may not be totally, you know, very advanced or achieving good success or su sustainable success initially. But the whole hope is that if you are relentless in this, 
putting these kind of indicators, making people compete. And of course, there'll be mistakes in the information system or verification system, but you keep grinding relentlessly, then over time, the system will clean itself. So these are four, five indicators linked to uh, toilets and the wastewater management. And it's part of the national ranking of cities. I just wanted to mention that. Thank That's you, Dr. Right. The, I, I, I just want to mention to all, all our students uh, from Maastricht and others that uh, it is indeed extraordinary that, that so much care has been given to indicators. Amit, please show your video, you know, to indicators because so far our university people have developed a lot of indicators for the innovation systems called the Oslo Manual. manual for innovation and that's bringing us a lot of fame but so far i have never seen and i know a lot about fecal sludge management valentine maybe you can comment so much of data gathering to make a systemic transformation so i i, I really wanted to uh, have uh, mr rajkumar's and mr valentine's comments on what's happening in india what do they think and Michael also, and then we give the floor to Jennifer. Uh, Amit is the other uh, policy administrator. Is he going to be joining us or can we take comments from all the previous speakers on this experiment? Actually, he's still in a meeting. He, so no, that's, have... that's fine, that's fine. We have done our best. So I would like, I'm very curious before we pass on to Jennifer and who is our last speaker. I'd like to know from Valentin, uh, Mr. Sampat Kumar, and Michael, what they think of, and any others in the audience, what they think of this, the big Indian experiment, and anybody in the audience also. Have you seen anything similar? Is Valentin, yeah, go ahead. Michael, yeah, please. Uh. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, I can't really say that I'm seeing your, but I have seen uh, others on other places. Uh, I have read a lot of uh, different uh, uh, reports, etc. And um, all is working to uh, improve the lives. And that is very, very good. So, uh, but um, um, as I see, it's 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 what what is a little uh, lack of is that it's not it's not com uh, connected together in the in the world. So many people do many things on different places and try to connect it. It's that's a difficult. very very good thing. It's more difficult. I have been in 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 Africa. I have been. In, in South America, I have been nearly everywhere and seen the interesting thing that many people around is, is uh, very uh, committed and do very good things, but why not connect them so they can work together? I think the, the economy will be much better and uh, the, the cost will be much, much lesser and we can um, we can, uh, at the same time, try to learn from each other and make That's it. A, that is a very good point, and it's very well taken. You're talking about greater coordination. I mean, across space. Uh, Valentin, uh, Rajkumar, do you want to add something? Then I'll give the floor to Amit and Raja. Also, do you want to react to what Michael said? Yeah. Thanks. Uh... There, of course, um, there is a need for coordination, but um, fortunately you have Jennifer in the call. So yes. she's from the FSM Alliance. So I won't talk too much about uh, getting people together on FSM. Uh, she can do that much more ably. Yeah, I, I think that the need for data collection is there. No, you can't make informed decisions if you don't have accurate data. So definitely it's, uh, it's a requirement. Then the second thing, of course, if you have the data, what do you do with the data? That always find very interesting. So collecting data. And thirdly, and that's something still a work in progress, 
what we do see, and that's a little bit what Raj Kumar was talking about, but most of the fecal sludge management businesses today in the world, they, uh, they cannot run on fecal sludge alone. So if you make a product, you need something else. And typically what we're talking about is organic solid waste. And what you find is, although we're dealing with the wash sector, there is less similarity between water and sanitation than between sanitation and solid waste management. So at both cases, you have a product you want to get rid of as soon as possible. You have people collecting it. You have uh, a place it's going to. And then you have the recycling economy. The good part about solid waste is the recycling economy is much more developed. It's very big. So there are a lot of different uh, materials which you can get from solid waste. But there the problem is it's, it's mixed. So how do you uh, segregate at household level? You come back to the, the same thing which we had earlier with sanitation. How do you make people aware? How do you generate demand for sanitation? How do you make now, the question now is how do you make people aware about the need and the usefulness of segregating solid waste? What are they getting for it? So it's a similarity even in that aspect. So, uh, but then, yeah, it's, uh, I do agree it runs with data. So, uh, and I do think, yes, this is the way forward. If you have a waste times a waste, and you know, uh, we, uh, most of you are, uh, or some of you are, st <laughs> are still in university. If you multiply a minus with a minus, you get a plus, right? <laughs> so we're looking very much for the plus. That's great. I, I see Jennifer nodding so much. I, I think we must move to her before, you know, opening the floor. Because so that, Jennifer, are you ready? Would you like to take the floor now? Okay. Sure, I'm ready. Yes. Then we'll open the floor to, yeah. Uh, firstly, while I'm getting this slide going, uh, thank you to, to everyone who helped organize this panel today and happy World Toilet Day to everyone. Uh, as, uh, as mentioned, my name is Jennifer Williams. I'm the executive director of a new organization. It's called the Fecal Sludge Management Alliance or the, or the FSM Alliance. And our goal is really to create uh, a platform where organizations working in FSM can, can come together. So really truly about breaking down the silos. Uh, and it is World Toilet Day, but I did just want to, to mention, uh, it's not just about the toilets, which we've heard from many of our speakers today, it's also about the treatment. So it was great to hear some of the, uh, the other speakers talk about some of the safety parameters and new guidelines that have been created around the, around the compost. Uh, specifically just because we know in certain parts of the world there are uh, different kinds of pathogens that are endemic to different places where uh, different types of treatments are needed to make sure that everything is truly pathogen free. Um, so this is just a quick, uh, a quick graphic of uh, the, uh, what the fecal sludge management cycle is going through all the different options. Um, so it, like I said, it doesn't just stop here, there's a whole, hopefully there's a whole uh, series of steps that happen to, to go to uh, safe treatment, but also reuse and or disposal, the circular economy that many have, speakers have mentioned today as well. Um, and I did see when I was looking at uh, Separate's website, there is also a, an incinera a cinner incinerating toilet, excuse me, um, that uh, Mikhail did not speak about today, but uh, it does sort of stop right, right here uh, at the household level, which I found very interesting as well. Um, I did just want to go back to uh, Professor Romani started uh, the day off mentioning that this is not just a problem for low to middle in income countries and I just wanted to to add on to that as well. Um, since the theme of World Toilet Day is around sustainable sanitation and the intersection with climate change, uh, the current sewer systems in, in uh, other modern cities around the world are very energy, land, and water intensive. And uh, a lot of those cities are also, um, they're also experiencing difficulties expanding capacity to keep up with population growth. So I think it really is about innovation, which other, other uh, speakers have also mentioned today. Um, but as we've also heard from many of our speakers, it is really about the whole ecosystem within a country. So choosing the appropriate technology for users, coordination uh, amongst all the different levels of government, 
um, service providers or service delivery that can meet the user's needs at a competitive and fair price. Uh, but also behavior change and public health campaigns, because we know sometimes if you build a toilet, people don't, don't use it. Um, and I think we really need to increase citizen, uh, citizen awareness and, and their engagement as well. And I think this is why it has been so interesting to learn and hear and watch the progress of the Swatch Bharat mission in India specifically. I'm not sure we've ever seen such a, a ambitious uh, political commitment from all levels, all levels across the across the country. So starting at the very top with Prime Minister Modi, all the way down to to the different levels of of um, local uh, local municipality coordination that we've heard from some of the speakers today. And I think India gives us a really positive uh, example of how this is possible because as also mentioned today, uh, India is a very diverse uh, subcontinent with many different states, many different differences, many different preferences, uh, you know, all, all kinds of differences. And so I do, I do really find uh, the Indian example quite encouraging to show that um, uh, a diverse context within each state is not a reason not, not to try something very big and ambitious, but I think it also really highlights the need for the high level commitment from, from policymakers at the highest level and the coordination all, all across. And we, we know the work is hard, uh, but that's also not, not a reason to do it. If, if it wasn't hard, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem. So uh, I just a uh, tremendous, tremendous thanks to all of the, all of the public health workers across India, uh, especially the ones uh, who have been uh, battling with COVID-19 as well. Um, difficult, difficult year. Uh, but we know how important uh, water and sanitation, good water and sanitation are. Um, and then lastly, I did just want to do a quick, uh, I, uh, to respond to the question also, uh, how can uh, the United Nations universities help? And I think uh, going back to the, the topic or the title of the session about breaking down silos is to really help us to support a multidisciplinary approach. So where have we seen successful behavior change campaigns in the past? Uh, so I think about other, other pandemics that have affected the world, uh, Ebola in Africa most recently, but also some of the things, uh, some of the other similar uh, respiratory diseases we've seen in, in the parts of Asia. And, and then also um, uh, in the early 2000s, uh, the HIV AIDS behavior change health campaigns as well. So I think we need to really start looking at what methodologies can we adapt uh, to support a more holistic approach to sanitation as well, to really incorporate these uh, public health and behavior change uh, methodologies. We, we know they exist. We know some have been quite successful. And I think it's, it's time to start borrowing from outside our own sector. Yeah. And then just lastly, I just wanted to quickly conclude with the fact, um, I don't know if any of you know, we do actually organize the only uh, conference on fecal sludge management. It will be next year, uh, in, in hopefully in Jakarta, um, but if not, if not possible in Jakarta, then, then online as well. So uh, it'll be May 31st to June 3rd, um, and more information can be found on our website. So uh, Jennifer, thank you so much. Can you please tell us about your mission and vision of the Fecal Sludge Management Association. Oh, sure. Yes. So um, our goal is really to, to help and support uh, organizations who are working in the, in the area um, on the topic. And it was to really provide a centralized platform for organizations to come together. Fecal Sludge Management has seen an exponential growth since probably 2015. Uh, we've seen that with the attendance of the conference specifically. So uh, we wanted to create an organization not only to be able to, to host the, the conference and to maintain the focus on fecal sludge management, but also to bring together uh, to, to uh, have a more coordinated advocacy approach for the implementation and adoption of fecal sludge management as a utility service. So that, that is sort of our uh, mission, mission, if you will. Um, I, I might, this might sound a little provocative. I <laughs> just want to know where your stance is. You know, the World Toilet Organization, Susanna, all these conferences, they have very, very hefty fees and they are usually held in very fancy hotels. So it's for a particular community and not for ordinary NGOs, ordinary people like us. So I was wondering, 
you know, when you say conference and putting people together, which, who are you talking about? That's, that, thank you. No, that's a, that's a great question. And I think it has been a attention for us. I'll, I'll just be very transparent back. It's been attention for us because there was a, there was a point uh, when I personally became involved in the organization of the, of the FSM conference. And my mandate at the time from my, from my former boss was to try to make FSM sexy. So uh, to really, and to really try to, um, bring a certain level of, of organization to the conference that could make sanitation professionals feel as important as a medical doctor. So to, to sort of bring that level of prestige to, to sanitation uh, workers around the world. So it is a, their opposite, uh, the, the point that you raised being inclusionary, but also having a, a very uh, well-polished conference that brings that level of pre prestige are polarizing values. And I think that's been one of the most difficult things that we that we face. And so this is part of the reason um, with crisis comes innovation, right? So uh, knowing how uncertain the world is, we've, um, we're shifting to a, a hybrid conference model, uh, looking at how we can have a more, a smaller, more uh, regionally based in-person conference. So that being in Indonesia, this in 2021, but also providing an online component, which can increase increase the re, uh, reach and also uh, allow people to, to join who wouldn't normally have the funds to travel. Uh, I think we are, we'll, we'll also see more organizations uh, choosing travel policies, taking into account carbon footprint and climate change as well. So just wanting to um, be thinking about how we can reduce carbon foot, footprint as, as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank this very patient uh, audience also. And uh, we are running out of time because otherwise I'd go on forever. So I'd like to thank you all. And I'd like to give the floor to Parag. Uh, but, you know, Parag, can I just ask for one more minute? Does anyone have anything to say to anybody? If so, say now. If you're not too tired. Okay. Otherwise, we go to Parag. Shama, can I say Parag, maybe sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, I'll just uh, I mean, Mr. Uh, oh, we can, can have also Mr. a breakout. Mr. No, Mr. Himanshu has sent a message, and he wants me to read it out because he could not come. So you tell me at what point of time it is to address uh, to the United Nations University and other participants. Uh, you why don't you read it out now itself then if it's not okay. Too long. One minute, I'll just. Uh, it is basically to uh, the, to address the question of, sorry, I'll be looking at my screen since on the phone. How can academic researchers help uh, you achieve the, your you know, aspirations in Swachh Bharat mission? In particular, how can the United Nations University and its networks help you in these efforts? He has given the following points. One, we invite UNU and researchers to review existing technologies and options that are conventionally available for toilets and fecal management systems slash wastewater management systems. Any refinements and suggestions would be welcome. Number two, we are planning to make quote unquote zero waste wards. Ward is a unit of, you might say, administrative geography. This will be a living laboratory for innovation and experiments uh, uh, to take forward the objectives of Swachh Bharat. See, as, as a commissioner, his prestige will be tied up to say that I'm making this into a living lab. Can you help me in this? Free to experiment. Number three, we welcome sharing of case studies and good practices in sanitation, in brackets, toilets and wastewater management from participants and uh, participant entities and internationally. Number four, I will ask my staff and Fusion to be available post-conference to explore and suggest and deliberate on any specific research themes or activities. These can then be discussed with me, that is with Mr. Himanshu sir. And then let us see if any of these may be taken forward. He also says he will make available information and support to any such activities which are approved. Next uh, uh, point is, we'll also explore public acceptability slash possible application of ecosan technologies amongst other technologies, especially in the city periphery areas. And last point, 
I mentioned earlier is that today's uh, World Toilet Day, the central government have issued a kind of uh, city challenge. So cities will be competing on or they devising mechanisms, innovations to ensure that uh, waste, that is fecal waste management cleaners or the sewerage cleaners do not come in direct contact with fecal matter because if they come in direct contact, A, that's a safety hazard. There have even been fatalities, even one fatality is one too many uh, in cleaning a sewerage system. And uh, uh, lastly, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it, it just has to be done. So the entire government is thinking what are the best ways and this is an open challenge for everyone to participate. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I think in this, we will start by making a case study of Michael and making a case study of the Finnish uh, project in uh, India. We will also submit that. These are very good ideas. Let us see how we can make them come true. I will certainly write. Okay. This is, uh, we must get, uh, we must Any get Any apologizes more. for not being able to make it due to exigencies. He was very keen. That is very nice. That's very nice. So thank you. Thanks to all of you. Anybody who wants to stay back and talk, they can. Now the floor is yours, Parag. Okay. okay. I, I want to say something. Yes, sure, go okay. on. Okay, uh, uh, I actually wanted to uh, complete what I was saying before concerning uh, some part on the uh, Valentine presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Okay. If you can uh, just. Uh, okay, okay. So uh, I'm very, very interested in, uh, uh, in the uh, company uh, project. I wanted to come down to Nigeria. If I know they can hear me, if there's any way they can send me an email through my email royalgreen18 uh, at gmail.com so that we can talk privately more on how I can get a bankable uh, uh, proposal from them so that I can submit to the government of the state and the federal government to the Ministry of Agriculture so that we know how we can uh, use these resources and convert them into compost manure. I'm very, very interested on in how we can develop it in Nigeria. I think that's wonderful. Valentin, you want to, you will, I'll give you his email. I'll be happy to put everybody okay. together. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nuke. Okay. okay. Now, the floor is yours, Parag. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Parag, and I'm also from the organization team of today's event. And I must say that Today we had a great, great set of uh, speakers and lovely audience with us. So uh, on behalf of the organizing and the supporting teams uh, of this event at Finn Site for Society, uh, UNU Merit and Fusion, we would like to thank the speakers for their insightful presentations. And uh, we would like to thank all the participants uh, for spending uh, last two hours with us actually it has been more than two hours now <laughs> but uh, we hope that you enjoyed the event uh, and you have learned something new together only uh, we will be able to achieve the sdg number six so you uh, can find out all the websites on the chat and if you have any other questions you can reach us on the following email addresses and we hope that you will join us for the future events as well so now we will leave the floor open for further discussion. And if you have, and if you are interested to interact with the speakers, do not hesitate uh, to raise your hands uh, to ask any questions. And others uh, may leave. But before that, I would love to request everybody to switch on their cameras so we can have a big picture of all the participants. Anurag, sir, can you do that? Yeah. Okay. Everybody, Everybody has please. to uh, has to stop their video. I mean, show their no, video so that Anurag videos. can take a. Yeah. I'm waiting for Amit and Christina to switch on. Mr. Amit, if you can switch on your video and Christina. Should we stop the? I'm going to stop the recording. Yeah. Thank you. We are ready. Uh, 
I'm going to take a screenshot in three, two, one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So thank you, everybody. And thank you, all the organizing team, all the students, anybody who wants to chill staying around, you can. Anybody who wants to 